What's up guys, Cliff here from the Sunday Drive. We are back, it's been a few months. The Silverado is alive and well. Well, it's missing its nose, but that'll be back on soon. We have some updates for you in today's video. So welcome back guys. It's been a little bit since our last upload. We had the holidays and everything and just busy in general. Um, we're actually in the middle of working on a customer's M3 over here. Uh, a couple of our guys are in the process of pulling the turbos out of this car so we can do some upgrades on that. So our customers have been keeping us very busy. So thank you guys for uh, supporting our business. We appreciate it. But we wanted to obviously give you an update on the Silverado. It is alive and well. It's breathing. I have the grill on over here. I left it off for a little while because we were climbing in and out, making sure everything was running well and it appears to be doing so. So um, while we were putting it back together, we shot some video clips. Uh, there's some tips and tricks that we've learned uh, from doing this twice on this vehicle now. Um, so we're going to go into those videos so that you can see some of those steps we did as we put this second motor into the truck. Um, and there should be some tips that are helpful. After we get through those, we're going to come back and kind of give you a little update on how the truck is doing. Now the new motor was from a 2016 Silverado, whereas mine is a 2014. These are both 5.3 L83 motors. Now my truck came with a 6L80 transmission. Um, now when we went to install the new block from the 2016, it didn't really cross my mind until I noticed that the torque converter bolts weren't lining up because the new truck came with a uh, eight-speed transmission, the 8L90. And although these appear to be identical, it's the same number of teeth, um, the only differences are the number of holes. This one actually has more holes, my old one, and the location of those holes. So these holes are off by about a quarter of an inch. So obviously that's enough that the torque converter in my truck is not gonna match up. Um, obviously the 6L90 torque converter does not work with this flex plate, your 6L80, transmission torque converter is not going to work with this flex plate from the 8L90. So if you are swapping out your motor uh, from an earlier generation Silverado to a newer one, make sure you find out which transmission came with it. Now, I do believe that those newer gen Silverados, you did have still have the option for the six speed. So you will need to look into that, figure out which one you have. So the first time we pulled the motor from this truck, we pulled everything as one assembly, and that also worked really well for filming for you guys. So I'm glad that we did it. We are able to show everything in really close-up detail. But what that was not helpful for was clearance and actually removing this from the truck. It was really hard to fit it between the front here and the firewall. Um, and what happened the second time, because we were pulling the motor apart in the vehicle, trying to figure out what's making all these uh, knocking and clicking and all the sounds that you guys heard in the past videos, like what's going on. We were pulling the heads out. Um, so we had the heads removed and then we pulled the block out so much easier, so much more clearance. So when I assembled the new motor, the used one we picked up, I left the heads off until the motor was installed in the vehicle. World of difference made it way easier. You'll obviously need someone to hand those heads into you. You don't want to be climbing in and out with them, but definitely recommend doing the heads inside the truck. I wanted to do a quick side-by-side -side comparison so you could see uh, the 6.2 versus 5.3 heads. Now, these are both of the ported heads from GPI, so the two outer ones are the 6.2 heads that we received mistakenly the first time, and here are our new 5.3 heads. So looking at the top, they look identical as you would expect. It's not until you flip them over uh, where you see the massive difference in the bore and the size of the valves. Uh, so that was our issue all along. Now the first time we built the original motor that was in the truck, we had new fuel injectors that went in as well as one new fuel rail. Um, and we actually found a tool that works a little bit better at pulling those fuel rails out. So you hopefully don't end up bending your fuel rail like we did the first time. Definitely had some lessons learned there. But this time those were brand new injectors. So we uh, were gonna obviously reuse them. We didn't feel like they needed to be replaced. Um, but when you do pull injectors, it's a good idea to replace all those uh, seals that go around the tips because it is a high pressure fuel injection system. So we shot uh, a video and we're gonna have a DIY come up on that to how to replace those seals. You do need a specific toolkit. Um, and that was something that we had to do this time that was different than the first time. Now, a lot of people had recommended that we use the oil pump alignment tools. 
Um, so we did go ahead and do this, do that this time because why not? Better play it safe than sorry. You don't want to have to pull something apart again. So this time we did get those oil pump alignment tools. Now we didn't actually have an issue the first time not using them. So you can do it without them, but if you want to have peace of mind, throw them on there. They're not that expensive. Now they do need to be modified a little bit. So there is a very expensive, I think it's like $165 version. Um, that will just work. However, we found a version that was significantly less, about a quarter of the price, I believe, um, and it works with just a little bit of modification. So we went that route. We have a video coming out showing how to modify that tool to make it work, um, and it just gives you a little bit more peace of mind that you know when you reassemble your motor, put it back in the vehicle, your oil pump is gonna be aligned properly. Uh, a lot of people had asked, you know, what harmonic balancer puller tool did you guys use? We obviously used an OEM one. That's not one that you're gonna be able to go and buy easily. You can find it, it's not cheap because it's what the dealers use. We found a much less expensive one that works well. There is one little quirk to it, something you have to work on a little bit to get it to work fully, but it works uh, good enough that it's gonna, uh, if you're, especially if you're only doing this job every once in a while, it's gonna be perfect, um, but it's a tool that I would use regularly um, for this job. Now, during the process of doing the DOD AFM delete on this truck, we've received a lot of feedback from you guys, comments, Instagram messages, Facebook messages, and we really appreciate all that engagement. Thank you guys. It's really cool knowing that something that we did is being helpful to so many people. Um, and I apologize to those of you that I haven't always been able to respond quickly or Pete hasn't been able to get back to quickly. Um, we do get a lot of messages, so we appreciate your patience. Now, one of our subscribers, someone that went through and actually did the DOD delete on his truck. He had the 6.2 and did it. Wish I had the 6.2, but whatever. Um, he did the DOD delete on his 6.2. He was having an issue, and uh, what was happening was there was these loud popping sounds. So once the truck got up to operating temperature, there was popping sounds that were coming from what appeared to be the water pump. He pulled out the thermostat, um, changed the thermostat, was still having the same issue. Um, popping sounds was still happening for a little bit after the vehicle was stopped. Pressure was building up in the coolant reservoir. Um, when you take the cap off, there'd be a lot of gurgling and stuff like that was going on. And, but nothing was overheating. And if you do have a exhaust gas leak, normally your coolant temperatures will go up through the roof and um, you can actually detect that. There's kits you can buy and put that over and it'll detect the exhaust gases inside your coolant. Um, he didn't have an exhaust gas leak. The temperatures were staying level. And what we ultimately ended up figuring out was the head gasket was installed backwards. So just wanted to add this into the video in case this happens to one of you or someone else watching. It's actually very easy to flip this head gasket around the wrong way. You would think not, but it is pretty easy to do. Um, it is conveniently labeled front, so um, you do have to miss that, but it is not labeled front on the back side. And the same head gasket is used on both sides of the motors. Um, and it will actually like fit over fine installed this way or this way because it obviously has to work on both sides. However, um, you gotta make sure front stays at the front. And the difference that you're gonna see is this hole cut out right here is not on this side. Um, and there's also a couple little cutouts right here. Um, obviously these are on the back, these three. And at the front you have this larger one. So if this is flipped around, uh, basically where you install it this way, now you can't see, but that this is now at the back and these are at the front, the coolant can't flow properly. So you're creating hot pockets in your motor. And as long as you don't run the truck for a while, now he did put like a thousand miles on the truck and everything seems to be okay. I hope everything does end up being okay. Um, as long as you don't run it super hard and aren't pushing too hard, you should be okay, but you are creating hot pockets in your motor because the coolant isn't flowing properly. There is coolant in there, but it's not flowing properly. So if you are having these loud clicks and popping sounds and you can't figure out what is wrong, check your head gasket. Um, there are some differentiating factors. There's a little notch uh, on the back. So if that little notch, if you're seeing that on the front, you know that your head gasket is in backwards. So when you install this, you basically wanna have it installed this way and then flip it over to the other side. If you take it this way and then flip it around to fit the other side, now you're in trouble. Um, so definitely make sure you pay attention and hopefully that helps someone out if you are having this issue. 
We also decided to go from exhaust manifold bolts to exhaust manifold studs. And the advantage of this is you don't have to worry about the stud getting sheared off if it gets corroded into your head. Um, I guess it's still possible, but way less likely. Um, when we took the initial exhaust manifolds off the motor originally, back with my first DOD delete on this truck, one of those bolts did shear off. Now, we weren't reusing those heads, and we were able to get the bottom part of the bolt out, but that could be a real pain if you're doing something in your truck, and you, let's say I put headers on here at some point, and one of those bolts breaks off. Definitely gonna be a pain to fix that. Um, so, decided to preemptively install these exhaust studs from ARP. Um, exhaust manifold studs. Uh, so that was just another little upgrade we decided to do while we were in there. Feels weird to be uh, actually driving this vehicle again. Um, feels good, but feels like I'm driving somebody else's truck. <laughs> Gotten so used to driving the Camaro, I've kind of had to relearn everything that's a truck, just how loose the steering wheel is, how much body roll there is on turns. Uh, but it's been fun, it's just so nice. Um, I love my Camaro, it's stick, I really enjoy driving that. Um, but there's something just nice about being able to hop in your truck and just cruise. Um, still getting used to driving it. I've already put a few hundred miles on it and uh, still, uh, still getting used to it again. So it's like having a new vehicle. But it feels good. I haven't really pushed it too hard yet. I'm trying to make sure all the engine components get broken in well. Um, I, I know it's not a brand new engine, but there is new stuff in there. So I just want to make sure everything stays nice and lubricated. Going to check the oil, uh, change that out in a few hundred miles probably put a thousand miles on it or so just for the, the heck of it. Peter does not have his seatbelt on right now, so my truck oh. is not happy. <laughs> there you go. All right. But uh, yeah, the truck rides really good. It feels smooth. Um, I do have the 6L90 torque converter in here, and um, this is my first time really getting to use it. We did wait until the truck was up and running before we posted the install because we wanted to make sure the torque converter actually worked without issues. Um, the 6L80 transmission has never shifted well. Now, I haven't done any tuning or anything to the truck, um, but uh, again, going from my stick Camaro to this, the shifts are very rough. It definitely downshifts really hard, but it's kind of just always done that. Um, uh, go drive straight here, I guess, but it's always done that. Um, so getting used to it again, I'm like, man, is the, is the torque converter working right? But it, it's just this transmission. This is just a hard shifting transmission. Um, so I may try to tune that a little bit, um, but uh, the 6L90 torque converter works well. Now we are gonna dyno the truck because I really wanna see you know, how the power has improved from these mods. And we then are gonna be adding that 6.2 intake manifold throttle body and a aftermarket intake. Um, so definitely looking forward to seeing what numbers this puts down once everything's broken in, once I'm sure everything's 100%. Um, we are going to be refining the tune. So right now I'm just running the initial base tune that I got from GPI, Guatney Performance. Um, it seems good. It's not great yet. It's just a baseline tune. So I'm going to be doing some revisions. But again, I'm waiting until the truck is running perfectly for quite a while. I want to make sure there's no issues. Um, <laughs> this is digging way too long. I don't want to chance anything being wrong and messing something up. So again, wasn't going for crazy power. I just want this thing to be reliable uh, for the next 200,000 miles more if possible, but I don't want to be stranded somewhere because of DOD. Um, I would feel dumb for not replacing something that I knew had a potential to leave me stranded um, out there. Now, with that said, obviously we ran into more headaches than we anticipated, but I'm still happy I did it. I'm still happy that we have this video series out there for you guys. And uh, we are gonna be doing this to Pete's vet. I don't know how soon, probably within the next year and a half to two years. Um, so we'll have another video series coming out for all those Corvette guys. I, I'm betting there's, uh, guessing there's a lot of people that don't have Silverados that have been watching this series because uh, the DOD AFM systems and most GM vehicles, if not all of them now. So. Um, we'll definitely be having some more vehicle specific content for the vet uh, and maybe even a Camaro at some point. So we'll have to see uh, what the future holds. Um, but we want to make content that's helpful, that's actually useful to you guys. So 
Um, it really uh, is good to know from all the comments, again, messages and stuff we're getting, just that this is helping a lot of you guys out there. So that uh, feels really good to be doing something that uh, is having a benefit. Now, this isn't some super lopy, aggressive cam. I went with the stage one. You definitely can get more power if you go with that stage two, three, or even four uh, cam. However, I do tow a lot with this truck. I wanted reliability with a little bit more power. So we stuck with stage one to keep that torque curve down low when you're pulling off the line, towing a trailer or something like that. So nothing super aggressive. Um, it definitely has a little bit more of a rough idle as you would expect uh, with an aftermarket cam. Um, so when you're sitting at a light, you know, the, the truck's shaking a little bit, um, nothing crazy, but you do feel it a little bit in your feet and in the steering wheel. Um, but as soon as you're moving, it is smooth. There's, uh, it feels really smooth once the truck's underway. Um, besides that normal, typical Chevy shake above like 70 miles an hour where the whole truck likes to vibrate and shake um, because of the great suspension that this vehicle has. Just gonna do a quick pull for you guys. Um, Again, haven't done anything with the transmission, so the downshifts are not super fast or aggressive. This isn't a sports car. Um, but once it does downshift and you are in those lower RPMs, it does take off pretty well. Um, I forget how fast the truck used to accelerate. It's been a year and a half since I've driven this thing, so I can't do like a butt dyno. Uh, but it does feel pretty quick, so I'm definitely enjoying it. Again, I'm not pushing it super hard yet. I really want to make sure everything's 100% after all this time that we've taken to put into it. But it feels fun. Reliability and extra performance is always a nice combination when you can do it. So this is it guys, it's been a fun journey. The truck is back together and running. Um, really though, we're not at the end of the journey. We still have a lot to do this truck. Tons more content coming out. I hope you guys have enjoyed this series. It really seems like you have been. So thank you for sticking with us. It took a long, a lot longer than we thought this was gonna ever take. We thought one, two months, we'll have the truck back together. I actually initially thought I was gonna have this done in like two weeks. I was very optimistic. Uh, filming always adds a lot of time and when things go wrong, it can take a lot longer and when the world goes crazy for 2020, things can even take longer. So thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate everyone, all the subscribers. Thank you for uh, getting us to where we are today. Can't wait to see what the truck puts down on the dyno, getting this tune refined and we will see you back here next time.